Hi, this is Larry Huppen. I'm the Medical Director at ProLab, and in this video we are going to compare the two different types of manufacturing technique for polypropylene orthoses, and those are vacuum formed and milled. All right, so let's look at the difference here. In general, these are very similar devices, and in fact, the shape should be exactly the same based on your prescription and the negative cast that you send us. Essentially, what happens is when you send your negative cast to the lab or you send us a sort of image from the scanner, we're going to do corrections to the to the negative and then to the positive cast exactly how we used to do in plaster. We're just doing those now on CAD CAM computer. We'll add any fill that you prescribe, we'll add lateral expansion to the device, and we'll bow our foot to the rear foot. From there we can do one of two things. We can either mill out a positive cast and we create a positive out of very hard wood and then we can heat up the polypropylene and vacuum form it up of the orthosis exactly as we used to do with plaster and we come up with a vacuum formed orthotic device. Now the other option is that we can mill out the orthosis directly from a block of polypropylene and in this situation we end up with uh, a device the exact same shape it's just milled out directly. Now there just are, are a few little differences or some limitations on these milled devices. There's a few things that you can do with the vacuum form that you can't do with the milled. For example, if you want to put a sweet, this is a pocket in the orthosis uh, that is then filled with the soft material into the device. We really need to do that with a vacuum formed orthosis. Uh, the other thing if you want to put in a plantar fascial groove into the shell of the orthosis then we want to do that with vacuum formed. And if you're going to do a very high medial flange, we, we uh, really have with vacuum form because the height of that device, including the height of the medial flange, is, is dependent on the thickness of the block of the polypropylene. And for that reason, the other foot type that you probably don't, the one foot type, you probably don't want to use a vacuum formed orthotic for, I'm sorry, a, a direct milled orthotic for is the Pez Cavus foot. Just because of the higher arch, sometimes the block of polypropylene is not thick enough to create an arch that conforms close enough to the arch of the foot. Almost every other foot it should be fine. Uh, this is why if you look at our pathology specific devices, our Pez Cavus is actually made with a vacuum form polypropylene as is our posterior tib dysfunction which has a medial flange but most of the other devices are made out of a direct milled polypropylene. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to both of these devices. We've talked about some of the advantages of the vacuum form. It forms very well to higher arches and it, it, it works well for making a medial flange and you can add secondary curvatures like sweet spots and a plantar fascial groove. Now the advantage of the direct milled is that it is less expensive primarily because the rear hose on the direct milled device is intrinsically built into it. There's no additional labor to add a post as there is on the vacuum formed. Uh, you can see the two devices here. Here's a direct mill. The post is intrinsic and was part of the milling process where with the vacuum formed we have added the post secondarily, just more labor. So this device, the, it, although the exact same shape as this one, is less expensive. And I, I think for most people, it's probably the, preferent, uh, the, the best device to start with uh, for most pathologies. Uh, now, the other thing that you should be aware of with these is that because there is no heating of the polypropylene with the direct milled, it, it tends to be a little bit more for the same thickness. So when you're prescribing a shell rigidity, you have a couple choices. The easiest thing is just to go over here and choose the rigidity that you want. And most of the time you'll choose a semi-ridge and, and then we will pick the correct thickness of polypropylene based on whether you're picking direct milled and formed and based on the weight of the patient and the height of the arch. 
but if you want to choose your own thickness you can go over here the direct milled uh, we can go down as thin as two millimeters and up to six and the vacuum form we can start at three millimeters and go up to six but keep in mind direct milled tends to be a little bit more rigid so for this, let's say for the same 160 pound patient where the vacuum formed you would probably want a five millimeter device to make it semi-rigid with a uh, with a direct milled you'd probably want a four millimeter device so again those are the differences between the direct milled and the vacuum formed orthoses please contact us if you have any other questions on uh, on these devices